Hey guys, what's going on? Jeez. Travis Mary Adder from Team Buffer Outdoors. And we're currently we're gonna make a state butchering this deer that our buddy Tom Farrell has got it. You are tuned into NJ's leading outdoor channel. Where new videos will be posted weekly on hunting, fishing, how-tos, recipes, and much more about the outdoors. Please, click on that red subscribe button right there in the corner and the bell icon right next to it so you won't miss out on new content. This is a tricky part here. As you can see, I started from this, started from here, up, and I cut around. And you're going to see this tendon right here. Now, make sure you don't cut that. Never cut that tendon. You know why? Because as you can see, if you look up, you're going to see it's hanging on this big clothes hanger here. They call that a deer gamble. And if you disconnect that tendon, it's going to disconnect from the deer gamble. And your deer is just going to go flopping on the ground. And we don't want that. So we're just going to go right in here on this hide. Use the tip of the knife. Make sure you work away. And this side's done, and we're going to repeat that process on the other side. And once we do that, now we can really start getting... If you look inside that cavity, you're going to see some good old tenderloins right there. They call that sweet meat. That's nice. We're working up in here. We just got to repeat this process on the other side. Watch. Get inside that hat. Cut up. Cut up. Cut up right here. Works inside to his inner leg. This is a young male buck. Considered antlerous. Come here, Paul. Coming off, boy. Oh, the tough part's coming up soon. I hate it. Oh, you just gotta cut circles like that? No, what you gotta do is see here. And here, this is connected to that sinking. But yeah, it's just it just comes off like that. You really just get in there and use the tip of the knife and you just you just really start pulling. Before your hand muscles get all weak or cramped up. <laughs> and when you do it in the winter time, it's a lot tougher than you do it early season because the high kind of gets stuck, like blue, it just doesn't want to move. In the summertime, it's just early season, it just comes right off. My Uncle John does this, he could have this whole thing quartered, quartered in 45 minutes. Well, you don't want to saw the pelvic bone because you don't one you see these hinds right here they're they're nice and and good and fresh to be eaten when you saw the pelvic bone all this gets spoiled it gets like hard and brown you don't want that you want to get as much meat from the deer as possible enjoy the great outdoors it's called a harvest for a reason Back in the old time, every part of this deer, from the joints, the sinew, the silver skin, some people call it, use this bowstring. You got this hide right here, a pelt, used as a mat, warm for a cover. You can make hats, you can make vests, you can make clothing from it. Great blankets. You just really want to, before you get the knife, you just want to just wing your weight in there. On your weight. <laughs> it just comes down like that. You go lower and burn now. Just pull. Just pull. Anything you can't get, 
You always got your knife. Just cut. Look at this. All this meat. All this tendon. You know, I could. I think you could put that in there. You could salt that up. Make a little jerky out of that. Wow. I'll make quick jerky right here. Look at this tendon right here. Look at this. What is that though? It's right on the side. That's just. That's part of the uh, flank. And then here, here's the uh, piscadillo. You know, sadly, you're not going to be enjoying the rut there, fella. But, just keep going. Just get in there. Work away. Cut that. Well, this it's almost connected tissue. Set up. Kind of put the camera. Is that the stuff they made bowstring out of? Yeah. See how see how stretchy that stuff is and how strong. This is what they did back in the day. We're gonna want to just keep pulling down. Keep pulling down. What they shed like hell, huh? Keep pulling down. Here's your shot. Here's your beer over 100, 100 pounds stressed. Then it's worth worth it. This here is probably about 80 pounds stressed. Decent sized beer for Jersey. Gonna get your meat. It's nice meat. See here. This is the cream of the crop. Good old back We go into our that first part. We we'll swing this deer around here. What you're not taking that hide down lower? That's all I need to. All right, I like to just remove the planks. You can see it's connected into here, and we just pull and just just follow the bone line and cut to where you want to cut. That's a flank there. That's a steak. That's a steak. It's called, you ever, ever have flank steak? Flank steak, Tom? Yeah. And uh, like that. That's another, it's connected to this rib cage. We're going to get that after we get this. This is what you call your filet mignon. So I'll just follow, cut inside, cut towards the bottom. Towards the bone, it's just connected. It's just like this tendon. Sometimes you just come out with your hand. It's great. It's actually pretty cool. You get underneath there, and they just come out. You just have to see. It came out like that. Bang! That's one tenderloin. That's it. That's a nice piece of meat there. They call that the sweet meat. And okay, if you can, just get rid of that one now. Just like it's real lean that one is. Just pull them out. You got some nice tender one right there. And if you have to cut, then you can cut. And you cut away from where you want to get. Look at that tender one. Bang. Organized. So you got your two tender ones. Every deer has two of them. Unless you screw up on the butcher job. On the field dressing job. Now you're messed up. You get your good old flanks. Again. All you're doing here is removing meat from bone. We're just going to follow this bone line. we follow this bone line of this rib cage. Rib down towards the rib. There we go. Flank. That's one. These are nice. And this is a nice thick cut of the flank. That's all steak. That's all steak. Two. Done. Now, 
cramp. That's how you say it. Make the string out of it my way. And it also helps. Seems to be stuck on this pelt here. Okay, now, you see these here. Cram de la cat cram, also known as the back strap. So, we're just going to do a remo remove the meat from the bone here without making any special cuts. Your basic cut of back straps, you're gonna make an incision right here on this tailbone. That separates this hind, the rump, sirloin and stuff right there. It's gonna make an incision. Right there, it's gonna make it around here. It's like connecting the dots. Every muscle, every tendon connects to itself. It's separate. A little bit of experience, a little bit of sight, and really get deep in there. Really deep in there. All right, now I'm gonna make. So your spine is very important here. Very important. Very important. We're gonna run this knife into the spine. And it even helps when you can see the spine, because now you can cut it. Make sure your knife is getting deep. Deep in there, it's cutting towards that spine. Just gonna run down to here. Now the back straps. What's cool about the back straps is just like the tenderloins, they're just gonna come out the tail. But we're gonna use a knife here. It's gonna be click, click, click. You see, run it quick. Have it here. Oh, this is a good back strap here. You really get in there. Quick. Quick, 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 quick. See that click and sound? Quick, 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 quick. That's good. That's good. That's what you want. Yeah, a little bit of rib cage, connect it, just cut away from that. You can see it kind of slots itself in there. You really want to get that quick in it because that really is going to separate the meat from the bone. You just do this, just do this, just do that. Click, click. Now, come doesn't want this connected to that if you just want to get this New York strip and then you have your ribeyes right here this connected to that and leave this on here you get your tomahawk stick okay really separate that moving the meat from the bone now it comes out okay it just slots in there it just slots in there click 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 Quick, 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 quick. Rip me, rip me, rip me. Want that. We want our back strap. It slots out. It actually just comes out. See how it slots in? That stuff, silver skin. Don't want that. And actually, separates. There we go. We got ourselves a nice back strap. Cut in two. Connect it, connect 
て。Type of meat right here. If you want, you can cut that. Actually, use your knife to remove some of that silver skin right there. You don't want silver skin or butchering a deer. And now you got this, and all you just to just rip that right there to the face. Come out right here. Oh, there we go, back strap. Right there. If you did it right, you should have come around the same size. Alright, ready? We'll get the intro, so say it. Say. say. Hey, I'm Team Buffalo Outdoors. I'm going to teach you how to get a deer from blah, 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 blah. Ready? Say. Hey. Hi, guys. Charles and Ragley out of here. Today on Team Buffalo Outdoors, we're going to teach you how to get rid of this hind quarter, separate this from the rest of the cavity so we get the footprint in this hind. We're going to take this hand saw. If you have a sawzall, you take this here, it gets it done quick. Where the back straps meet the, re, meet the rump, you're going to take this, you're just going to saw inside. And this is going to separate. And that's down like that. Now, you go up here, you see this tendon? See this? This deer's got some nice hocks. Gonna come in here. Just gonna salt right before the hide. 